Don't know why there's no sun up in the sky. Stormy weather. That's tonight's topic on Hollywood Blockbusters. I am Joe Hollywood. And once again, I'm joined by Imaginos Pete. Hey, hey. And George Johnson. Welcome back. Thank you. All right. So uh, upon the conclusion of our last podcast, we were trying to co- come up with an idea for the next podcast. And what we settled on were, was movies about uh, weather, weather pheno- phenomenon. I'm calling this episode Stormy Weather. And part of the reason is uh, we are finally getting, I guess it's called the sequel to the movie Twister. Uh, this one is called Twisters. And it's coming out July 19th, 2024, starring Glenn Powell, Maura Tierney, who I love, David Cornsweet, who's the new Superman. Mm-hmm. And um, so I'm kind of looking forward to it, even though from everything I've read, no one from the original Twister is involved with this film at all. Am I correct? Have you heard anything differently? N- nothing. I Nothing known from the original cast. I would like to point out one one interesting thing to the audience, our, our watching and listening audience. Andrew. Can't be here right now because he was called away on special assignment. That's right. His first one uh, that he's missed. Uh, two more strikes and he's out. George will be his permanent replacement. <laughs> <laughs> there was there was a dirty rumor started by, by, by both George, uh, by Joe and myself, that maybe George had something to do with Andrew's mix. That's right. Excellent. But I don't think Andrew's cooperate. four flat tires are a coincidence. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, well, when guess, you said he had his first field assignment, I thought, as a CIA only <laughs> undercover. Right. Uh, we miss you, Andrew. We're, we're we looking forward you. to having you down here. Yeah, we'll look forward to having you back. Uh, now, uh, in addition to Twisters being released, uh, you turn on the news, and my Lord, weather is going crazy all over the world. Biggest tornadoes we've ever seen, biggest hurricanes. Everything is biggest and baddest and worst. Uh, the yeah. climate is... Out of control. But let me ask you both this question. You know, when certain things happen, certain movies, you go, oh, I can't. We made this movie, but then something realistic happens, and they say, we can't air this movie now. It's, yeah. It's, you know, it's insensitive. It's like life imitating art sort of thing. I just yeah. happened with a lot of zombie movies. Like, oh, it's a pandemic. We can't do it because there's a pandemic. <laughs> I said, that's a zombie thing. Okay, you're fine. I love yeah. zombie stuff, but if you're going to postpone again, here, you can't. How do you postpone twisters? People are like, yeah. this feels too close to home. Like, well, yeah. I mean, even in our state of Michigan, we had people that were devastated by by tornadoes. So yeah, I is also there, uh, do. You think that calculation factors in? Yeah, I don't. I, I would imagine. Yeah, um, I also heard, uh, just read recently that uh, I want to say over the last four or five years, we've experienced the hottest stretch of temperatures in the history of recorded temperature taking. Uh, so temperatures are. Sp- Biking out of control, uh, serious weather. And then, uh, not that this is necessarily weather-related, but when you think about earthquakes and tsunamis, all of this is all happening, and, and everything is the worst. Everything is as bad as it can get weather-wise. I, I, I agree with that. That's one of those things where you go, well, you know, extreme weather, it's once in a decade. Okay, it's once in a lifetime. It's once in yeah. a generation. It's once in a century. I'm like, well, it's... Now it's every year. It's, it's, it's happening every worse. Tuesday. Like, what's going on here? Yeah. And on top of all that, Stormy Daniels is in the news. So <laughs> it just... Uh, <laughs> a coincidence? It's a, it's a, I think not. Dare I say, it is a perfect storm to talk about weather-related movies on our podcast today. Uh, I'm going to start off with what I think is the gold standard of weather movies, and that is the original Twister. Uh, 1996, uh, directed by Jan de Bont, if I'm pro- pronouncing his name correctly. Uh, Helen Hunt, Bill Paxton, one of my all-time favorite actors. Uh, Carrie Elwes, Jamie Gertz, who happens to be the richest actress on the planet. I don't know if you guys have heard this. No. She is the wealthiest actress on the earth right now. She have like, Vanderbilt? She, she, I, th- I don't know if she married into the money, but uh, she's a, like a multi-billionaire. She's like um, a Princess Kit Grace type of thing or what? Uh, something like that. And you know yeah, what? I I'm, know. I'm now officially on the cancel list, watch list. <laughs> of course. Why? A woman can't be naturally successful. She could have invented like the, uh, like a, a different type of microchip. Oh, I assume like that she uh, married or born into it. Yeah, who was that? Uh, was it H- H- the, not Hedy Lamar, was it? Uh, was it H- Hedy Lamar? I think so, who, yeah. Who invented like radar? Yeah. Or, or like 
or like Something furthered like some piece of radio. Anyway, I'm terrible <laughs> at that. Yeah, but no, I mean, super important stuff. Yeah. But yeah, but no, she's she's but all very complaint, wealthy. All complaints can be sent to Andrew Walker at gmail.com. <laughs> And rounding out the stellar cast in Twister, Philip Seymour yes. Hoffman, the oh, late gosh. Philip Seymour Hoffman, who was fantastic. Is he fantastic one of the, what, is he the com- cameraman? The uh, something like that. Yeah, is he that was part, part of, the of crew? that crew. Yeah, yeah. And let's just um, pause for Helen Hunt. Uh, gosh, she was so sm- still is just absolutely gorgeous. You know, I, I I caught a little bit of Twister on TV the other day, and I thought the exact same thing that uh, when when the camera cut to her, I'm like. Wow, she's, she's so I don't remember yeah. her being that hot. Maybe with the benefit of hindsight, and I'm getting older, I can appreciate uh, Helen Hunt and her peak. But, uh, yeah, you know, I remember when Twister came out, the, the effects were groundbreaking. Yeah. The trailer. Yeah. The trailer is what sold this movie. As a matter of fact, I remember reading that there's a scene in the trailer where, like, a tractor tire comes flying at the camera, and that was shot specifically for the trailer but the audiences demanded that it be included in the film, so they had to put it in the film. So, yeah. Have you ever been to a trailer where they don't include the thing that they oh, showed sure. in the trailer? Oh, that could be so a whole podcast. It makes me so yeah. okay. Yeah, that Some can be a whole podcast where you expect to see something in the movie that was in the trailer and then it never. One of my favorite arrived. film franchises, Lord of the Rings, did that several times. Yeah. I'd say, like, wait, where is that scene? Yeah. Come <laughs> on, yeah. Peter. I have to admit, though. What I liked better than the tire tractor tire scene was cow when cows were airborne and flying around in the tornado. And that was like, we had like, never seen anything like that. In I, film, I almost so. expected a witch to come out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Two guys in a rowboat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I, almost kind of like they went for that vibe when they had the cows flying around. Um, but yeah, the I think the, the that was probably one of the greatest trailers in movie history. It put butts in the seat. It was a summertime phenomenon and uh, a lot of fun. Now, when you watch the movie today, I don't know if the effects hold up as well as they did at the time. At the time, they seemed groundbreaking, but we've made so much progress that I don't know if they hold up. And and that seems to be sort of a common thread. I When we decided on this topic, I realized there were some natural disaster movies I hadn't seen. And I noticed that for a lot of movies that depict tornadoes and stuff like that, the effects just weren't there. They all just looked like something out of a video game. So I'm hoping the sequel uh, to Twister is going to sort of up the ante a little bit. And I really hope that I'm not taken out of the movie by really bad tornado effects. So yeah, what are your memories, uh, Nick, of Twister? Twister came out at that perfect time for me because that was the mid-90s. I was right, that's right when you know, I'm going through high school. So that's every summer. Get the popcorn, get the coke, go to the local movie theater and just watch. And you, you, I, I remember watching that, going, "I didn't know, I, I didn't know Twisters were alive. Did they really hunt people like that? <laughs> like that's that's dangerous. That you guys need to stop that stuff." Well, it's like you said uh, just prior to us going on the air. Is is the tornadoes and Twisters were like characters? They were like yeah. feral animals. So the sound effects sounded like the roar of a dinosaur or a lion. Uh, they made it the the villain in the movie. That's basically what they were. <coughs> Excuse me, and that's yeah. that's actually was a key point because even Helen Hunt, I, we were talking about this. Helen Hunt kind of says that you've never seen it miss that house and that house and come right for you, <laughs> almost like it had a vendetta. And you got to go because of the opening of the movie when she loses her dad. Spoilers, but uh, it's no because that's that's a big thing when you can infuse. Uh, like emotion into the into the enemy into, into like a natural event mm-hmm. and you could personalize it that's the way to do it uh, we were men- I mentioned the movie Unstoppable which was uh, bi- inspired by true events it was Denzel Washington and Chris Pine it was about a runaway tr- uh, train carrying a bunch of chemicals <clears throat> and as that movie went even though you know it started off with it was a man made you know error every time they you know the great cinematography sound effects it, that train sounded alive it had like this like this gr- this growl to it. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, okay, they have to start. This thing's like, I'm going to kill people, and you better <laughs> stop me. If not, I'll take everyone out with me. Yeah. I don't care. And it makes you wonder if they uh, actually add sound effects of yeah. wild animals to an inanimate object to create the illusion. And that's that, like, why they the deserve an Oscar the, category. Yeah, yeah. The sound, well, sound people do. Sound like mixing, sound, yeah. yeah, that's what they, exactly. they and, it, yeah. and it deserves to be on, on air. Yeah. Don't give that, don't give that award. <laughs> Saturday yeah, commercial morning. break, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That George, uh, your memories of uh, Twister? I remember going in thinking it was a joke. 
kind of like, oh, cool. And <laughs> and and I don't remember. I didn't have a CGI to be able to compare it to. Mm-hmm. And so um, when it happened, I don't remember maybe what your reaction was, which is when you went, you know, when you just saw it recently, like, oh, the CGI really takes from it. It was special back then. Oh, it was. And, yeah, yeah. And I think there's a scene, if I'm not mistaken, where they go underneath some kind of a, a door or something, and everything gets torn up, and then they open up the door and they look around. That was so cool for me. Yeah. Well, um, think about how terrifying the opening sequence was, where the 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 family's in the basement. I think Helen Hunt, when she was a little girl, her father's trying to hold the yeah. cellar door shut, and then he gets sucked it, out into the tornado. That was terrifying. That's right out of Jaws or Alien. That's an ex- you know? excellent point. You and George kind of hit it on the head because in when when they were talking about like the 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 scene that I think George is referring to, like at the end near the end of the movie when they're when they chain when Bill Paxton and, oh that's very oh and, that's and right they, they're chained into that shed and it rips the shed off and they're whole, they're anchored <laughs> and, going, that's and they're seeing the inside of a yeah. tornado oh and it gets quiet for a moment yeah, yeah. And, it, and, and looks and they almost had a, they they had like an angelic choir sound I'm like. <laughs> Yeah, like, <laughs> and you can see like stuff going there, like we've never seen the inside of a tornado before. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I don't think if that's the way you want to do it. But uh, and the other one was when they were at the before the big one hit, they were at this uh, drive-in. Oh, and then that was at so night. And then when you see the, the lightning flash, you see yeah. it in the background. It looks like the T Rex coming. They're like, oh my god, there it is. Yeah. And they run into that garage, oh, and I the tornado like that. destroys the screen yeah. as everyone's watching and you, it. And you can't cars, like, where yeah. is it? You feel the wind. They're like, they can't <laughs> see it. And then when the lightning flashes, you see yeah. the tornado silhouette. Yeah. And it's moving, and it's almost like those horror movies when the flash happens, it's closer. Yeah, flash, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and cool. you're going, oh wow. I was like, yeah, you guys should probably run. Yeah. See, that's what made that movie, or just the moments like that. They were unforgettable. That, and it that's was, that's and a popcorn, yeah. popcorn <laughs> summer fun. Man. Exactly. That's a great. You see, you read the words on the page, and it says, "Okay, tornado, frightening yeah. tornado coming." Like Jaws. Like, okay, how do we translate that onto the screen? And the, the director, cinematographer, son, they all they wait. What did you say? How do part. you say that again? Put, put that down. They translate the words onto the screen. No, no, no. Before that, something about Jaws. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Didn't they do a movie called Sharknado? <laughs> Oh, yeah. we're, oh, we're going to get to Sharknado. Oh, yeah. trust me. We're going to get to Sharknado. What, that must have been somebody said. <laughs> Weather it's and it's sharks. It's a tornado yeah. and it's sharks. Yeah. <laughs> you are not going to hear Sharknado and Oscar worthy in the same sentence, but we'll we'll get to Sharknado in a little bit. <laughs> now, one thing interesting about the, you know, the, the rash of tornadoes we've had over the last couple of years is now everyone has a, a camera phone in their pocket and yeah. we're seeing some spectacular stuff caught on video i saw one just a few days ago where you see houses just getting shredded into pieces and going airborne and it it, you can't help but say that looks like something out of a movie so i'm hoping you know a movie like twisters can now study that and try to replicate that in film because these tornado uh, attacks that we've had are so well documented now that there should be a lot of reference for filmmakers today. And I think what you mentioned, Twister, the original movie, captured this. It's the after effects, the people. You cared about Helen Hunt's aunt, right? And that town. And he's like, this town was devastated. People are trying to rebuild. People have lost their lives, their livelihood. Yeah, it's yeah. um. That's you know that's the key to any not just disaster flicks or whatever, but for most movies. The movie will work or fail based on whether or not you care about the characters. Absolutely. If you don't care about the characters, uh, it, there's just no weight to the film. You want to care about what happens to them, which I think is a good segue to the next movie I want to talk about. So when we decided on this topic, I, as I was looking at lists of greatest weather-related movies out there, there were a bunch of titles that came up that I had never seen. And being a movie guy, I was kind of embarrassed that there were some pretty big titles out there I'd never seen. And one of those was The Perfect Storm, uh, which shockingly came out 24 years ago, released in 2000, uh, starring George Clooney. Great cast. Mark Wahlberg, John C. Riley, Diane Lane, uh, based on a true story, which we're going to kind of dissect in a moment. Um, But the movie... So I watched it for the first time in preparation for this podcast. And I think what the, what the movie did well was develop some characters that you kind of cared about. You wanted to see them succeed. You wanted to see them bring home that, that, that hall yeah. of swordfish or whatever. 
Um, but overall, I thought the movie failed miserably. And now, it's, here's the dilemma. It's based on a true story. Now, Hollywood has a tendency to fudge history. Sure. You they Why? you want to make it you want to make an interesting movie so you combine characters and you tweak things. Don't get me started on movies like Braveheart and stuff, which are loosely based on history or Gladiator. So the Perfect Storm's based on history. Now all they really know about the actual story is that these guys went out fishing. They weren't aware of the hurricane, at least not to the extent as the characters in the film were. And they had turned around and were coming back and kind of got ambushed by this perfect storm, these multiple hurricanes that were forming. And a according to people who were trying to track them and, and listen to any calls, they went down so quickly that nobody really knows what happened on that ship. So now here they are making a movie that plays out dramatically what happened on the ship when it's all speculation. You'd have no idea what happened on that Their ship. Their motivations, like the decision makings, especially for George Clooney's character. Yeah. And so some of the things that bugged me about the film was that they depict the crew. And apparently this made the fam the real life family members of those those people really angry is they depict George Clooney's character as just being reckless and saying, you know, Hey, our, our, our freezer broke. Uh, we're going to lose a lot of money. Let's sail into this storm, which is probably not what happened in real life. And now, and the other problem I have with this film is after caring about these characters and, and rooting for them and wanting that Hollywood ending, spoiler alert, they all die. And I sat there as credits rolled, like, this is some bullshit. <laughs> like, come on. What kind of end? That was one of the worst endings I've seen since The Mist with. Uh, oh, with yeah. <laughs> Thomas Jane. <laughs> Thomas Jane. They, they had two endings. But for, they, Jane... for Perfect Storm? Or... No, no, for The Mist. Oh, for The Mist. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I hated the ending. Hate it. And, and again, I know it's based on true life, but why not take the elements of the true story that made it, you know, an interesting story. But why, why have to root it in, in history and, and make an entertaining movie where we root for these guys and somehow they make it through, they reach land, they cash in their, their hall. And everything. like, I would have rather have seen an alternate ending where they survived the storm. And the fact that just as they teased in the film, Remember, they sort of, they got up over a wave and they see like a sunset or a sunrise. I don't know. And uh, and you're like, you know, if you don't know what happened in real life, you're like, oh, they might make it. And then this giant wall of water comes out. And they're like, oh, no. That was just a tragic, devastating so, ending. Yeah, let me give you my angle on this, if you don't mind my jumping in here. Go ahead. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when I saw, I went to see that eagerly when it came out. Mm -hmm. And I was really excited about it because of the trailer. And the trailer shows this wave, and this, these guys are going, and you're going, oh. And, the, and yeah. it shows the boat beginning to go. The a little climb. Bit. And really then wave. all of a sudden, you see it like this. You're like, what? Yeah. And that's when it stops. Like, and that's the climax happen. of the movie. They're basically they're, giving away the end of the movie. They're giving away scene. the end of the movie. But, you know, like, it goes back to watching the old Twilight Zone movies. You have this really cool, or episodes, not movies. Um, you have this really cool idea. They introduce the idea. And then they've got the ending of the I they they introduce the idea, they've got the ending of the idea, which isn't for another twenty minutes, right? Because it's mm -hmm. a and so they, they just do all this kind of stuff in between and they talk and they've developed some characters. And then the thing that is really cool, Twilight Zony, happens at the end. Yeah. But in reality, you for most of those, not all of them, but for most of those, you can squish everything in the middle down and you can just watch the first three minutes and last last three minutes and go, <laughs> dang, that was really good. Yeah. This is just like that. Mm -hmm. There was nothing I cared about those guys. I don't care about the development. They were going to die. These guys <laughs> knew they were going to die. The whole thing came down to the one thing that everybody got there, and this is big wave, yeah. and to see this thing go up the wave. And when I got in there, I'm like, I saw this at home. <laughs> I saw this at home, and you guys aren't going to make it. Then it, the, it goes underwater, and there's a couple of things. But nothing surmounts that moment. Mm-hmm. And I already saw it. Yeah. And it's it's like, wait, 
It's trailer malfeasance. You know, it, it, it would have been better if, like, Gollum had been at the top or something. Yeah. You know, some crazy sea shark thing. I don't know what. Godzilla, or, Godzilla sticks its head or if, over. Or if, or, if, <laughs> or if, like what you said, the, 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 the boat goes under and somehow. Pops out. It pops yeah, up yeah, yeah, and these yeah. guys and somebody's still caught underneath and they just barely get him out. That would have been cool. But I'm yeah. just all die. It's like, wait, what am I doing here? Yeah. What did I pay good money for? That's exactly I my reaction. the same way. Initially, I, I'm like the movie was pointless. It, it was pointless. pointless. When, when they ins- when it's inspired by real events, I say, okay, you now have creative license. So if you wanted to kill some of them, sure. Yeah, because you a, a compelling movie puts characters in danger and their consequences. Yeah, and yeah. So if you say okay, and then the captain lives with the guilt, you know, when he comes back, it's like they died because of you. And you could say, you know, you know, George Clooney's character goes into depression or something, yeah. something, like, you know, whatever the after. Or maybe, thing. maybe Clooney's character goes down with the ship, but yeah. everyone else survives. He and paint he him as the bad guy. Himself. He's a real jerk. He's like, no, let's not go that way. No, we're gonna get the fish back. No, we've got to. <laughs> no, let's... and then he's the one who dies. I'm on board with that. Yeah. And then, so this is a, a unique situation where, you know, a lot of times, like I, I like a Hollywood ending. Sometimes it's fun to be surprised with something that deviates from a Hollywood ending. This movie needed a Hollywood ending, not just all right. Let's just. Kill I, them all there was off. a part of me that was kind of hoping that who was it? remember there was that female captain. Um, I forgot the actress's name. She was in uh, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Yeah, uh, she, she has remember. three names. Uh, yeah. She was uh, in. Uh, uh, she was in the Abyss. Now. Mary. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 Oh my God, she's, it's going to kill me. But Ma- anyway. Mastri Antonio. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Mastri Antonio is yeah. like, something yeah, yeah. like that. She's gorgeous. She's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. And so she was the cat. You know, she's playing. You know, you know, she's like, hey, I'm listening to the weather reports. She's telling George Clooney the movie. You shouldn't go out there. Yeah, yeah. It'd be one of those things where, the sh- you know, the, everyone's wearing their life vests. They're tr- struggling. And then her boat managed to come. Yeah. And get yeah. Them. Exactly. You know, bring her back and say, okay, she tried to do the right thing. You know. You yeah. Know, she avoided most of the storm, obviously. But. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the other, there was that other boat too with Karen Allen and crew, yeah. and that seemed unnecessary. Like, okay, who are these people, and why do we need to? It's see just that? like the Twilight Zone. You got a great beginning, you got a great ending, and you got to fill it full of stuff so that people can have their popcorn. Yeah. But honestly, you could boil that movie down into, and I look, think, about 15 minutes. We're Literally. all adults here, so uh, for anyone that's watching or listening to this, they don't say, well, what, do you want the Titanic? Not to say, no, you're not going to change the <laughs> Titanic where it, it makes it, or, you know, like Schindler's <laughs> List, I guess nothing bad happened. Like, no, no, yeah, we're not going to change endings. Like that. This is just one yeah. of those events where you could have had people die. Yeah. You could have had consequences. You could have had stakes. And But in the end, yeah. you can say, you know, just for once, maybe they, maybe one or two of them made in like, I'm, yeah, I'm, not, yeah. I'm, I'm moving into Kansas. I'm moving to Kansas. I'm, I don't want to see the ocean Stay ever away again. from water. Yeah, 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 but then you get, you get the, you get the tornadoes. But my, <laughs> yeah, right. but my thing though is that what do they call it? In, not that I know, but in porn they call it the money shot, right? Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. That's the money shot there. That that's wave. the money shot. That wave. That's yeah, it. it that's everything. Like, wake me up when the wave hits. That's yeah. it. And somebody who worked on that said, guys. This is where the money shot is. You gotta make that, <laughs> gotta make that wave look really good. But that's you know, it. Yeah. This uh, but is I, but, but I've seen, but I've seat. seen uh, uh, like clips where people talk like, "Why do you guys do that?" And like, well, it's like this weird marketing thing where you know people always complain about it, but yet that's what draws them into the theater. Yeah, you're right. So it's like one of those. It's like uh, with uh, Star Wars Episode One when they showed the dual lightsaber. Like uh, the back. Oh right, right. You're like, oh, why'd you do that? You could have saved been a that. Cool reveal. Oh, yes, yeah, such yeah. a cool reveal. And, yeah. When you saw it in the theater, I'm like, oh, it's interesting. I'll see it. But ah, oh, I wish they had saved that for the movie. Yeah, you know it's, what? You, even though this is a little off topic, it. but one thing that really I'm still <clears throat> angry about from when I was a kid was Star Wars had come and gone. And then we started getting uh, news about the sequel, and as Empire Strikes Back was getting close to its release date. And there, there was just enough in the trailers to kind of tease you. Our local paper, I think it was the Detroit News, said, uh, you know, oh, the new Star Wars sequel is here. Here's a picture of Yoda. And I'm like, oh, you just ruined now he's that alive. whole sequence. Yes. No, 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 for the second one, oh. for Empire Strikes Back, Yoda's introduced as like this <laughs> silly little character. Then there's a big reveal that he's the Jedi Knight. Here, this article is like, ruined. Yeah. here's the Jedi Knight. You ruined, ruined that it. moment. Because you ruined part of the, the build-up. In the movie, uh, you just think he's some little green, you know, like, yeah. you know, creature. And then it's like, 
Oh my God! Like you're Yoda. I, I exactly. cannot train him. So I train was him, I robbed cannot. of that reveal when when he turns serious and goes. I That's almost like putting him. a kid. Yeah. Like, almost like putting Darth Vader <laughs> and saying the Dark Lord said, "Comma Luke's father." Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. He had the caption of the picture. Yeah, exactly. Can be you like, imagine? Be like Bob. Bob, what'd you do with that? <laughs> Who edited this? <laughs> oh man! So, I can't yeah. believe that happened. Did it really happen? Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, I that's think a million dollar lawsuit. That, Why should that I go critic, say that? I found that critic on social media and like sent him a message saying, "You ruined the movie for me." But you I'm, moron! Spielberg yeah. had a similar complaint with Jaws, where somebody, I think Time Magazine or something, came in and saw the shark with all the guts out, mm. and and they published that, and he and. They thought Spielberg was going to go crazy. Oh, yeah. said, that ruins the you illusion. You take the yeah. illusion out. Like, my God. It's, the, it's pulling the curtain aside on The Wizard of Oz. Thank God know, it like... kept breaking. <laughs> so I couldn't <laughs> right. use it. Yeah, yeah. What was the movie that famously had people waiting in line to get into it? And as people were coming out, they were telling everybody the butler did it or whatever. Well, there was a scene on The Simpsons when they they did a flashback to when Homer and, and, uh, and Marge were dating. And they went to see The Empire Strikes Back. And as they're exiting the theater oh. and walking past a long line, he goes, I can't believe Darth Vader is Luke's father. And the line is like, you son of a... Yeah. Just ruined the whole thing. So, yeah, I like... I like If I know I'm going to see a movie, I, I tend to avoid the trailers because I just want to go in unspoiled. Trailer. I don't want to know anything. Like, if I'm on the fence for a movie... Not going to okay, watch it. Okay, give me oh. a little bit. Just to get, you know... Are you, are you going to push me to see it or not see it? So I don't, I'll watch a trailer if I'm on the fence. If I know I'm going to see a movie, I don't watch the trailer. Uh, that's me exactly. I hate, if I go to a movie, I'm sorry to interrupt no, you. No. If I go into, to a movie and I'm sitting there and, and the movie comes out and it's Sharknado, I'm like, yeah, I don't have to see this movie. Rock on. <laughs> give, me the, give me the whole thing or whatever. <laughs> Just something that's really poorly done or anything that starts with the view of a woman's legs and we're looking at some <laughs> horny guys on the other side. I'm just like, I'm never going to watch that movie. But I do hate it, and my, my family hates it, because when, when, a, when a movie comes out and says, this fall from Pixar, I'm like, oh, no. I'm just, I'll, I'll leave or I'll cover my yeah, ears and I hum. Wanna see. I don't want to know anything. I don't want to know anything. The kids will say, oh, Dad, you can't believe it. In They showed it, and this guy, and I was just like, no, I'll run from the room. Yeah. Because... When I'm sitting in the theater and I'm the first person to see that, it's a genuine laugh. Everybody else is like, ha, ha, because they've already seen it in the yeah. trailer. Yeah, yeah, Oh, I yeah. hate trailers. Yeah. Anyway. Now, again, we're a little off topic here, but I just want to I say this. this. Uh, one movie that I, or one trailer for a movie that I think put butts in the seat is, I remember back in 1990, 1991, I read the novel Jurassic Park. I was just about to say that. I read it. I read the novel twice in the span of a few weeks from cover to cover. Wow. Then they announce Steven Spielberg is going to direct this movie. And I, even though it was Spielberg, I was skeptical because I'm like, technology is not where it needs to be to convincingly, convincingly portray dinosaurs in a movie. It, we haven't seen anything that worked up to that point. And even during pre-production of Jurassic Park, they were still thinking about going with stop motion, which, yeah. in my opinion, rarely works. But then they had I'll this. I'll let Jason and the Argonauts talk uh, about that. Well, yeah. yeah, but those are cartoony. Like, you, you don't believe those are skeletons, you know. But anyway, <laughs> stop motion, never really my thing. So then there was a guy, and I wish I knew his name. Cause I watched the documentary on it where this guy said, well, I'm going to see if I can do it on the computer. And he deliberately yes. had it on his screen as the uh, yes. Kathleen Lucasfilm Kennedy. people were like, hey, so what do you got there? Yeah. And and so and now the all of a sudden the they're like, hey, by. we might go. Yes. Yeah. So then the trailer comes out. So I don't, I don't know anything about stop motion or anything, all of that. All I know is I was skeptical. Then we see the first Jurassic Park trailer, and I was like, Holy crap. Yeah. Like, how did they do that? So that has to be considered one of the most effective trailers in movie See, history. See, I never saw the trailer. I saw the teaser. Away. Yeah. And in the teaser, they kept. They always had the sound effect. And I, the only thing that they showed of the dinosaur for me was when the T-Rex foot the lands in the, foot, in, the, uh, in, the, yeah. in the mud. Yeah, yeah. But that's a practical effect. Yeah. So I was thinking going, are there really dinosaurs in this? Because I hadn't read the book at the time. I was still, you know, in middle school. I was like, <laughs> I was like are there really dinosaurs in this? Or what's going on? And it was a teaser. So I, yeah. I didn't see the trailer with anything. So I was like, okay. Then I saw it. I, it was magical. Yeah. The only other teaser that ever came close to that was The Matrix. 
Oh, yeah? Because it was very quick. It was like, what is the Matrix? And oh, yeah. Like, yeah, what is the Matrix? Yeah, and you see the effect like that. Yeah. The, the, that when the they cameras went around the person, and it's like, ooh. For modern times, the only other thing that uh, was a teaser that really got me, and I think I still think stands the test of time, is the Dark Knight, where it's the Batman uh, logo, and you just hear the audio. Yeah. And he's like, you pushed them first, sir. Some men can't I be think right. we should do this as a podcast. I know, yeah. I know. Because this what is put how the butts in the seat. Because triggers. and this all has this point. all comes down to skepticism. So when Heath Ledger was was cast as Joker, everyone said, "Come on, yeah. really?" It was the trailer where That's it's like because they didn't show you what it looked know like. How I got these scars, and it's like, ooh. But at the end, they say, you know, it's like some men, some men just want to watch the world burn, and then you hear that music says, <laughs> "Starting tonight, people will die." <laughs> oh, man, I'm like, is that you? <laughs> that's Heath Ledger and he does the laugh but I went I mean yeah, yeah that totally sold the movie and he was so good in that he movie. was he was but that so. that's what a teaser is supposed to do mm-hmm. you you don't Put show anything you just yeah. give you know the, and that one they knew because they, they yeah. Warner Wasn't Brothers like like, close encounters close encounters of the third kind where they don't yeah. show anything toward the end at all and it was just all on Spielberg or something well there was something by Spielberg where he just it just show a tiny bit, and it brought in a ton of people just because oh, of the sure. name. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, I, he I don't remember cash. what it was. It was something about aliens, but they didn't show the aliens. They just showed like doors opening and flashing, flashing lights and yeah. things. And yeah, that Twisters came out right after Jurassic Park, like a couple of years. So that's when we're like, oh, so th- things are possible. Anything's possible now. If dinosaurs are possible, I was. <laughs> and there's one scene where they're yeah. running, and you see a full Twister, you know, just of this rate. This barn and silo yeah, in, yeah. in broad daylight Being and it's destroyed. in the trailer and I go okay I gotta see this yeah yeah just for All that right. shot so there's Nick bringing us back on track we oh, no. veered off course we're now back on track uh, we always have a 45 minutes and we're on number yeah. three <laughs> <laughs> now another movie that I watched just to prepare myself uh for this podcast uh which I was surprised I I had never seen in its entirety I think I saw a little scene when i was visiting my sister's house at one time uh the day after tomorrow ah uh, yeah 2004 again 20 years ago roland emmerich <laughs> who is a little he's gonna be on this list a little bit later yeah. too uh good cast uh dennis quaid jake gyllenhaal um sir ian Holm. uh yeah yeah so it's a good cast i sat down to watch it and part way through the movie i don't know if it was halfway through maybe i started thinking this is one of the worst movies i've ever seen in my life now there were some iconic imagery the the statue of liberty not only getting washed over by a wave but then the the frozen oh, thing yeah. with the icicle the the horizontal icicles there was some cool imagery in the movie but as i was i'm watching the movie i'm sort of getting bored with it so i started looking up little tidbits and stuff and among these <laughs> the scientific community they voted the day after tomorrow the most scientifically inaccurate movie ever made. That the things that happen in the movie would never happen at that speed. Like in the span of a week, yeah. North America enters an ice age. And then by the end of the movie, <laughs> the astronauts in the space station go, eh, things are clearing up. Really? In a week, you're going to experience all of this extreme weather. And then then you get the happy Hollywood ending of, eh, things are looking good. It's one of the worst movies I've ever seen. And on Rotten, I, I looked it up on Rotten Tomatoes. Critics give it 45% positive. Uh, audience liked it a little bit more, 63%. Um, but, uh, or no, I'm looking at the wrong one. It was actually 45% yeah. from the critics, 50% from the audience uh, on Rotten Tomatoes. And uh, I think that's a generous uh, number. Because do you think, because, do you it think it's terrible. because people just walked in and be like, yeah, this is totally hokey. This is like a, this is like a slasher movie. We know that the slasher isn't going to, you know, dodge bullets and and appear at their places at the time. Yeah, I mean, you you just know that going in. I mean, I think the cover says it all. This is a hokey, you know, the trailer. Could, could, yeah. could maybe ten percent of the people walk in and be like, "Dude, did you really think this was going to be real? <laughs> I mean, did you really? Come on, like, like, yeah, like, I, I care about these characters. No, you don't. No, no you, you don't. don't. You just want to see the destruction. In fact, I don't know if you guys do this, but if I'm in a really bad movie. And like somebody's like somebody comes down with cancer or they're getting chased by a bad guy, I start rooting against them like die, die, <laughs> die, die, because it's so bad. I just don't. It's a, and if they want to play like music that makes me feel all hokey and 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 silly inside, like oh look at this guy, I say no. 
he should die. <laughs> you know, I, just, I hate him. That's kind of how like the Alien versus Predator movies were. I started rooting for the Predators and the Aliens. Like I didn't care yeah. about the humans. I, I just want to see creative ways they were going to get taken out. I mean, but yeah, also it, it's a Roland Emmerich movie, so I I, I right. automatically know I'm like okay, so everything's going out the way. He just wants a spectacle. It's like Michael Bay. It's a spectacle movie. It's explosions, right. hot go. women. Okay, I yeah. get it. There was another iconic scene in the film of the Hollywood sign just being destroyed by a tornado. And I, I had to look that up. I'm like, has a tornado ever hit Southern California? California? And apparently they have. I don't know if they've ever hit, like, Los Angeles, but Southern California has had their share of tornadoes. Something tells me that now that you said that, it's yeah. going to happen sometime yeah. soon. Yeah, right down Main I, Street. I'm so, I was trying to look for movies that involve... Um, Forest fires, like raging fires, because sometimes oh, yeah. now you listen to every year, Cal, Cal, and the burning season just started with California right now. Some of the the people who are fleeing the fires, so the firefighters say the jumpers, yeah, it, and it it's like a, and those fire tornadoes, those devil tornadoes, yeah, they, yeah. Call, they say it looks like it's hunting you. It, it yeah. sounds like Helen Hunt. It's like this fire looks like it's killed before it wants you, <laughs> and it's coming for you, and it they almost feel like does this thing have it out for me? There was a wildfire so movie crazy. that came out years ago, and the reason I, I'm even aware of his existence, I never saw it, but you guys remember a TV series on HBO called Entourage? Yeah. There were kind of fake movies within Entourage that uh, that uh, Adrian Grenier's character would, would be in, Vincent, and one of them was, I think, called Smoke Jumpers or something, where he they go into battle firefighters or uh, forest fires, and the funny thing is is, a lot of those fake movies that existed within Entourage later on became real movies, which is weird. So they did that smoke jumpers thing, and then a real forest fire fighter movie came out. I'm like, that was in Entourage. And in Entourage, uh, uh, Vincent becomes a major, major, major movie star when he plays which DC character? Aquaman. Oh, yeah. Which at the time was sort of a joke, like, Oh, really? They're going to do an Aquaman movie? We've now had two Aquaman movies, plus cameos Multiple. and other DC yeah. films. And so it's TV kind of series, funny that yeah. Entourage sort of has their finger on the pulse. I'm still waiting for the Ramones movie that yeah. they teased in the movie. Um, but, yeah, so there are wildfire movies and, and, and stuff like that, which I think would fall in this category, this topic. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so Day After Tomorrow, I just didn't care for it. I found myself fast-forwarding toward the end. Um and then I'm like, well, should I even bother with 2012, which is also <laughs> yeah. directed by Roland Emmerich, who basically did the same yeah. movie all over again. But he's the sun this time. <laughs> he's the sunspots. Now, this, believe it or not, the reason I just didn't even want to bother with it is on Rotten Tomatoes, it got an even lower score than The Day After Tomorrow. 39% from critics, 47 from the audience. Uh, this one stars John Cusack, uh, Thandie Newton, Amanda Peet, and Danny Glover as the president. Um, and as I was watching The Day After Tomorrow, I'm like, well, where's John Cusack? I thought he was in this one. And, no, that's the other epic weather disaster movie. Yeah. And I'm like, the same director did two almost identical movies. I don't understand and that And he at can't all. help himself. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd be like, Roland, if you want to you know, throw a curveball, kill one of the main characters. I mean, just do it. Don't kill the ancillary characters. I don't care about them. You know, just give me some steaks. You know, fry yeah. somebody. Now, I also, I wish I would have been able to grab a, a sound drop from the day after tomorrow because one of my biggest complaints about the movie is some of the worst dialogue I've ever heard in a movie ever with Dennis Quaid trying to convince Congress and the vice president of the of the seriousness of this and using this nonsense. I mean, maybe some scientists written it, but wrote it, but it didn't. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. And it was it was laughable dialogue. And then there was this one moment where they're trying to go uh, rescue Dennis Quaid's son, played by Jake Gyllenhaal. They're trapped in a New York library. They're trying to drive through this frozen tundra. There, of course, they wreck the car, and then Dennis Quaid turns to the other guy and goes, ah, "I guess it's time to get the snowshoes out." What? <laughs> Oh, now you're going to walk from basically Pennsylvania to New York City in the worst storm in the history of the world that's ushering in a new ice age. They're going to walk, and they happen to have their snowshoes with them. 
to yeah. get there. And this the way and the garbage. way they, and the way they describe and, and <laughs> Roland tried to make that that frost scene when the killer frost is coming as if it's alive. Yeah. Like because it it had to wait until they got to that one library room and because. Because that's how weather works. It's unidirectional. <laughs> it's always just chasing. It wouldn't have come yeah, from yeah. the other way. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just like, don't let the fire. I'm like, really? A little fire is going to keep this frost, which froze mammoths instantly. Yeah. Shut down helicopters, British helicopters. Like, okay, I get it. Now, that's the one interesting thing. I'm glad you brought it up. They they mention in the movie, they just happen to be at this museum that had the, the mammoth there. And they tell the story about the mammoth who was found frozen in the permafrost that's had uh, flowers in its mouth, flowers yeah, in its contents belly. In its stomach. And apparently that's a true story, that yeah. they found this frozen mammoth with fresh, not fresh, but you know what I mean. Um, and I can't help but wonder if that was the spark that had Roland Emmerich go, uh, Roland Emmerich go, hey, if this mammoth froze in an instant after grazing on a plane, Let's make a whole movie about that. I, but I Roland, can't. how we how we how about we do blame it on climate change? <laughs> right. Roland, that's not how this works. Oh, and, and that's the other thing. The the political commentary in this movie. Now, if you remember, and this this made me laugh out loud. So the ice age is creeping across North America again in just a few days. So what does that do? That forces America Americans to illegally cross into Mexico. Come on, man! And you You're had the, being, you had the Dick not, Cheney type art, yeah. type character talking to the George, the George Bush characters like, "What do you think we should do?" <laughs> Just asking the Dick Cheney character like, "What do you think we should do?" It's like, "You're the president, dude. You, should, you want to make a decision? All right, fair enough." Yeah, I saw Park lo- just lampoon that in one episode, and, then, and the day after, the day after tomorrow. Like, yeah, that's today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know now. I, I'm not a big fan of the word woke. And I know this movie came out 20 years ago. That movie's woke. It, it's like, come on. The message that they're trying to force feed you is so heavy handed. Really? We all have to illegally cross into Mexico now? Wow. Roland has a gentle touch? Yeah. <laughs> no. No. So, George, have you seen The, the Day After Tomorrow? No. <laughs> all right. he's, he's unlikely to see he it. He has now. not seen it. No, no, no. So I have a rule that if something hits below 67, which is two thirds, yeah. 6.7 or it's, you know, I just don't see it unless people tell me it's really great. Right. I do afford comedies, though, all the way down to five and a half because some of the best comedies I've ever seen oh, and absolutely adore critics are just don't five, five comedy. and a half. No, they just don't no. get it. No, they just don't get it. Okay. So there you go. Yeah. All right. All right. So the next one I was going to bring up, um, we touched on this a little bit before the podcast. We're talking about twisters. We're talking about rain. We're talking about an ice age. Let's go the opposite direction. Let's talk about heat. Now, as I was looking at lists of weather related movies, a lot of stuff I saw just, I'm like, come on, that's a bit of a stretch. Like we were talking about Poseidon adventure. Is that a weather related movie? It's one rogue wave. Yeah. But there was a title on somebody's <laughs> list that jumped out at me, and I'm like, you know what? I need to bring this up on the podcast. Uh, this is a movie about a heat wave that doesn't necessarily claim lives or anything, but it uh, pushes people to the brink, and that movie is called Do the Right Thing, 1989, where you have the Italians that own the pizza place and then the, the black community, and the heat wave just makes tensions rise and anger bubbles over until somebody like picks a up a cooker. trash can and throws, throws it through it. a window. And I'm like, okay, that's thinking outside the box. Whoever put that on their top 10 list, I'm like, bravo, because it's that heat wave that starts the whole push thing. the whole, it's yeah. the MacGuffin that drives it's the entire spark. movie and uh, brings things to a head. And so I thought that was a really interesting yeah. in- inclusion. And again, um, it's, a, it's a tragedy that this movie, written, by, written and directed by Spike Lee, and he actually plays a character in the film, yeah. was not recognized by the Academy. I, uh, did Spike win an Academy Award just recently? Yeah. Okay, so he got his first one recently, but he was just sorely overlooked for a couple of decades. And it's shocking that this movie was ignored by the Academy um, because it's as, it's about as good as it gets. And so, 
Yeah, I, I just wanted to bring this up as kind of a thinking outside the box weather related movie. Uh, your thoughts on Do the Right Thing? I loved it. I I never thought of you know now when you when you say it about it I go oh yeah what was the heat because I was thinking anything could have sparked the, these these long yeah. simmering tensions yeah you know it's like a garbage strike or you know it's just someone's like you're out of my favorite ice cream I hate you yeah yeah but here the heat because you know when you have because yeah I mean look when you're when you're when it's hot and sticky everything bothers you yeah everything bothers you yeah <laughs> you stub your toe. It's the worst thing in the world. The garage <laughs> won't open properly. You hate it. You can't sleep yeah. properly. You see yeah, a commercial. Yeah. Like, why is this where you put a commercial? <laughs> I hate this this news station. I hate everything about it. It's like heat yeah. makes everything just feel miserable. So, yeah. So that's the proverbial, you know, uh, wick uh, in a tinderbox yeah. being lit by this heat wave. So, George, your memories of uh, Do the Right Thing? Uh, just a real fast one, and that is, is that I think it's – the Parmesan cheese. Guy goes, he goes, that he goes, gives more cheese. He goes, no man. So he takes the other guy picks up the, the, the Parmesan cheese and he just starts <laughs> shaking it. I think that's when it, I think that's when I started laughing and going, oh, it's going down. And boom, it was. That was the that was yeah. the last straw. That's but so I really like that film. I think Spike Lee's really cool. I think he's I think he's very he was long overdue, adventurous. Yeah. And I think he had a lot of good things to say. Some of the movies he's done, I I don't think were all that cool, or mm-hmm. I didn't relate to. I should say because I he he's got a completely different viewpoint. And I love it. I think yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah, and a great cast: uh, Danny Aiello, Ozzy Davis, Danny, uh, oh, John yeah. Tutoro, who's great. And John everything Tutoro's he great. Yeah. So yeah. 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 All right. Um, another movie I wanted to bring up. This I I want to say this came up on our uh, uh maybe post apocalyptic uh podcast. Uh, Snowpiercer, uh, 2013. Yeah. Did you bring it up on the last? Yeah, I love Snowpiercer podcast? with uh, uh, Chris, Chris Evans, Evans, Tilda Swinton, Ed Harris, uh, John Hurt. Uh, it is now, a, or it was turned into a TV series, which I'd never seen. Um, but it came out in 2013, and I think I saw it maybe a few years later. Like I didn't see it right away. I might have even seen it like during COVID. Um, and when I saw it, I'm like, okay, this is an interesting concept and it's a well-made movie. The premise is a little skeptical. So basically, during the, the the near future where this movie is set, Earth has become a big old snowball, and most of humanity is wiped out except for these humans that are moving on a, on a train that's constantly in motion. And I'm like, okay, that's an interesting premise. But it's interesting how, uh, like the Titanic, they sort of set up these class distinctions amongst the train. You got your elites and you got the lower class and the elites are what feeding off the lower class, right? Maybe it's, it's a big social yeah. commentary. I mean, that's, exactly. I mean, if it wasn't cold, if it was like it's lava outside, we can't stop. You'd probably yeah. have the same effect. Or if it was in outer space or underwater. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah. the same thing. No it's skip. what happens to people when they're caught. Look, go back to alien. That's yeah. the beginning of it all. Mm-hmm. Or even before that, 2001, what do you do when you're when, when it's claustrophobic? What do you do yeah. when you're caught in the middle? You can't run. Yeah. And so in this case, it's taken that to the next level. They've put people in different sections. Kind of like, that's interesting, uh, the t- Titanic. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and the worst part of the movie is the fact that they're on a train and it's going and it never slows down and <laughs> there's somebody who created it and it's like that doesn't add up <laughs> but i do like it it's it's goes back to the old it goes back to the old um night of the living dead it's not necessarily the living dead it's what the people do inside yeah. the house yeah yeah the reaction that's to that. that's interesting and so you got these slow moving zombies and all that and that's that's cool and so forth and if you showed up for that that's fine but the real commentary is on, and this is Signs uh, by uh, M. Night, M. Night Shyamalan. M. Night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you do when you know the next day all hell's going to break loose and mm. no one's there to save you? Yeah. What do you do if you're in an outer space and you've got an alien thing that could attack? That, to me, is what's interesting. So that, I'm willing to go with the movie because of that, but like the outer part of the the, the train, like, well, what happens if there's an avalanche across the tracks? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, what's really powering this thing? Could, <laughs> couldn't they take that power Endless and, like, supply. make some, like, yeah. underground civilization? I mean, it just didn't make any sense. But anyway, I did like the movie. 
I did like the optimistic ending too. A spoiler yeah. alert for those of you who haven't seen it. I forgot what the ending uh, was. Basically, they a couple of people eventually get off the train. I don't remember the details surrounding it, but they find like green plant life <laughs> kind of sp- coming up through the snow, which is a symbol that okay, this ice age isn't permanent in the. And they the, found them thousands of years later with that on their tongue. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Which Frozen spawned still. a whole new genre of movies, but. So, you know, when we talk about movies like Snowpiercer, and I've brought this up on the podcast before, there's a quote by some filmmaker who was questioned about the storyline of the movie he made, and he was confused by it, like, oh, yeah, I never thought of it. And then he said, you know what, it doesn't matter if the audience understands what's going on, as long as they're entertained. And that's kind of how I feel with a lot of movies, is like, okay, you don't have to explain everything, just entertain me. And I thought Snowpiercer was entertaining. Right. I did, too. I, I really yeah. liked it, and I thought, what? When you finally get up to the front of the train, that's where it gets interesting. And there's some things. Tilda Swinton, I think, is phenomenal in the movie. Of course, you love Chris Evans. But also the uh, the fight scene. Like, how are they going to get past this certain thing? And they're yeah. and you're rooting for them, but you're also wondering, like, are the, are the guys on the other side, are they really that weak? <laughs> Have they really, you know, do these guys really? And then the beginning part where the guy has his arm out the, out the window, not the yeah. window, but the hole. That was horrific. I mean, you had my attention with that. <laughs> yeah. That was amazing. Anyway, so yeah, there's, yeah. there's some really cool scenes I like. Um, there's a movie, I think, called Old Boy. Have you ever seen that? No. It's a Korean movie called Old Boy. And it's um, it comes to a point where this guy literally has to fight a bunch of guys. It's modern times and all that. But it's a Korean movie. And it shows a hallway. And he's got to get past these guys. And suddenly, the movie sh- show removes one of the walls. And it's him fighting his way through these guys going from left to right. It's mm-hmm. like an old it's a side-scrolling game. Side-scrolling it's a side-scrolling yeah, yeah. game, exactly. That's fun. And I absolutely love that about Snowpiercer, and I love that about Old Boy as well. Yeah, yeah. Now, one more movie I want to uh, throw out. I mean, I have some others on the list, but one I want to throw out just because as I was research- researching it, it made me laugh. Uh, there's a movie that came out in 2017, and a friend of mine actually recommended it, and I almost brought myself to watch it. But I watched the trailer first, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Geostorm came yeah. out in 2017. <laughs> this is a, a variation Butler. on Roland Emmerich, uh, Dean Devlin, yeah, uh, starring Netflix. Gerard Butler. Uh, <laughs> Devlin's it, it, usually Emmerich's partner in crime. Yeah, 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 yeah. They did Godzilla in 1980. Oh, right, right. Now, I looked it up on Rotten Tomatoes. 18% from the critics, which is the lowest of all these wow. movies here. 35 from the audience, which is pretty bad. And I thought this quote was funny. This is one of, you know how on Rotten Tomatoes they'll publish some of the reviews from critics. And one of the critics said, this isn't so much a disaster movie as a disaster of a movie, <laughs> which I thought oh, was a that's great a quote. Great play of words, the yeah. trailer looks absolutely ridiculous. The effects look worse than The Day After Tomorrow or, uh, or 2012. Uh, have you guys seen Geostorm? And no. yes, because I have Netflix and I, I saw it. <laughs> and I, uh, I'm now, dying now, dying to hear your review. <laughs> seeing that movie, it makes me understand why Netflix eventually had to create a ad ad tier. Yeah, where you can we had to pay for advertisements because they <laughs> said like uh, you're losing subscribers. We keep blowing money on stuff like that. Yeah, but no, I mean look, the concept. You know, the America can control the weather from satellite because we invented these ways of. You know, someone just basically, like, isn't this like sprinkling salt in a cloud and causing storms? Like, what if we turn that into space? Mm-hmm. And, and we, when we use this technology, I went, all right, guys, look. You know, and then you have to create a story like, and, and it's not a shock, Butler's somehow involved in this stuff. Right. Now, looking at the trailer, they never, I don't think the trailer ever reveals who's behind it, but apparently there's some villain gain control of it, or yeah. is it? Okay, so yeah. someone's manipulating this yeah. weather control service. And if you don't give for, for what, what ends? Oh, so he's it's a demand, it's a blackmail scheme. Yeah, there's some, some political agenda to it. If you don't give me what I want, don't do this. I'm going to, you know, it's going to, you know, be arctic in France or like in Paris. I'm like, I'm like <laughs> they won't mind. All right. That's right out of a James Bond movie, man. It's really? it's really they took like some silly weather concepts and said, "Okay, what were some rejected James Bond villain ideas?" Yeah, yeah. You know, in my mind you know, or like Doctor Evil. What was from Austin Powers? Let's make this do, and we're gonna add a huge budget to it. You you didn't care about any of the characters. 
I don't yeah. care about any of the characters. And it's always the thing like, Daddy, you gonna come home? Like, no, Daddy's not coming home. <laughs> yeah. It's, now, you know what's funny? And again, I've probably brought this up on the podcast in the past. There are a lot of movies out there that the general population has seen that for whatever reason I hadn't seen. And whenever, especially because of this podcast, whenever I decide, you know, maybe it's time I sit down and watch this movie, I quickly realize that there's a reason why I've never seen this movie, yeah. and it's because they're trash. And I, I don't know. On one hand, I'm glad I finally got the perfect storm that monkey off my back. I'm glad I finally watched it, but it was trash. It wasn't a good movie. So, but the, this podcast is forcing me to watch movies I haven't seen. And it's actually kind of fun. Well, I'll put it this way. There was a movie called crawl. I wrote it. Oh, I, I saw, saw the uh, in 2019. description of that. Yeah, yeah, we transitioning yeah. to the list now. Go ahead. Cause I'm, yeah. I'm kind of done here. So talk oh, no, about crawl crawl. It came out in 2019. It's basically, there's a hurricane that's about to hit and it's this mother daughter. It's this uh, daughter and a, a father story, they have to go clear out, you know, a house to help, help evacuate people. It's the relationship between the father and the daughter. And you're talking about, like, it's very claustrophobic because they go into this big house, and what happens is because of the hurricane it, and, you know, the, the tides come in, and uh, alligators, giant alligators get in. <laughs> and so it's in the crawl space. So they're down there <laughs> trying to get people out, and all of a sudden the alligators start eating people. And talk, like you would, you think, well, what, what are we, what, why am I watching this movie? But you watch and you go, you get the class. Whoever was the cinematographer and the director, you feel the class. She's crawling underneath there. In, in, like, is that a gator in the distance? Like you hear the growl, the so, and then you see something. So I'm like, oh, you better move, lady. You better move, and it'll come. How a gator comes in and it gets stuck in the pipes and it's snapping at her. I'm like, uh, and that sounds and, so cool. And then. It was like, oh, well, they can't get to her because, thank God, you know, there's space. But then the water from the hurricane, because the flooding, it's... And then the gator's like, here I come. <laughs> oh, the water's helping me out. And sooner or later, I'm going to get you. And her dad's injured. She's, like, trying to drag her dad out of there. And it was... Uh, the concept, and he, someone's pitching this movie, and I'd go, you know what? I'll watch it. If you do this right, I'll watch it. If not, you're going to end up on, like, on the 5%, you know, <laughs> rotten tomato and... And it was surprisingly entertaining. Really? I, I wouldn't call it like it won't end, end up on the Mount Rushmore of any of these movies. Like I wouldn't put it next to Twister, but it might be on the Mount Rushmore of alligator movies because yeah. that is not necessarily a novel concept. I remember when I was pretty young, there was a movie called I think it was called Alligator, where someone had flushed their baby alligator down right. the toilet and it grew up, grow into this monster alligator that terrorized some neighborhood. And then there was Lake Placid. Remember Lake Placid? Yes. Where Betty White just spewed expletives throughout the film. That was the most memorable thing about that movie. I never heard a curse until Betty then. White's potty mouth. I, I sat that. up. When she said the first curse, I sat up I'm like, Betty? <laughs> is that CGI? Did you say that? Yeah, that was shocking. And we might, we might have to dedicate an entire podcast to, like, these creature movies or whatever because or Betty oh, White. There, there were some good or Betty White. Spent. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> you talk about a blockbuster. <laughs> Betty's Betty could do it. No, so Crawl would be one of those movies on there if you get a chance. And you know, George brought this up too. There's something about international filmmakers. They they get it. They 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 tap into the, they listen or they pay attention in, in film class or in film school. So we we're talking about disaster movies, Geostorm and stuff like that. So the concept of a and we were talking about this before the podcast the concept of rock slides. So when the volcano shifts, like when Mount St. Helen did, or any times, and if something slides and hits the water, it'll generate a tsunami. Mm -hmm. And I think, George, your list brought up The Impossible based off the 2004. I love that movie. It's horrific because it is so real. Right. Mm -hmm. It is so now that, phenomenal. Now, that was the tsunami based on real events, That's right? That's a real, yeah. And yeah, it's yeah. got Ewan McGregor and, and Naomi, Naomi Watts, Watts yeah. and a very young Tom Holland, yeah. Spider-Man. And... Uh, mm. You, you you sit there and you go, it it has a different cadence because it's a true story. Right. It has a different way of telling it because this isn't, it's not like, you know, jump scares and things like that. Although they do have some things like that in there. But you just sit there and you go, I, I, I get chills even think about it because it actually happened. Yeah. Her bone actually broke and her son tried to, I mean- it's phenomenal, and when that wave comes in and yes. just smashes everything down, 
they don't know if the other two are alive. And that is so palpable. I just sat there and going, oh my gosh, with kids of my own, freak me out. So- and, and even in the trailer, they did the right thing. Like you, you see in the trailer, I remember this amount now they might have re-edited a new one. You see Ewan McGregor's reaction. You see Naomi Watts. They're staring at something, and you're like, uh oh, what are they staring at? Yes. And they don't show the wave. Yes. They mm-hmm. never showed it coming. They're just like, you, you see them sure. like backing up, and you see this, I'm like, oh, I got to see what's freaking them out. I wonder what this is. You I know, mean, it could have been a giant rubber duck. But... Of, of, you think it's done for cinematic effect, or you think it's because they ran out of budget? Uh, let's, I think let's, it's let's, for cinematic effect. Let's give I them do. the benefit. Let's give that one mark. <laughs> let's give that one PR guy who's like, you know what? I'm going to intervene. Don't show the wave. Uh, I'll be fired, but don't show the wave. Now, you know what? I remember when the movie came out, and I never saw it. And part of the reason I've never seen it is because the actual footage of the aftermath of that tsunami. Is horrific. I don't think any movie can match Match. the drama and the tragedy and the spectacle of it. When you see, like, people on the beach going, oh, what's going on? And there's someone recording from their balcony. Yes, that's the and one. And then that initial wave comes in, and you're like, those are the first casualties. Like, they get swallowed up in this wave that comes in. And and you go it's from video people. to video to video, and it's more horrific and more horrific. And yeah, you see yeah, people yeah. clinging to debris as it's going. How does a movie match that? Because you know these are actors in this situation. When you watch these YouTube videos or whatever, these are people dying in these videos. Literally, so, you can see them so die. Yeah. I, I never saw the film because I just didn't uh, think a film can do justice to the real story it, that it was we well, watched the, unfold get, in real time. If you like, get a chance, it, I, I'd recommend it. It's a good, yeah. I mean, because of course, because Watson and McGregor mm-hmm. really do their job in it, kind of like Paxton and, and Hunt. Yeah. But uh, it's like watching uh, before, you know, the focus became the Fukushima power plant, but when the earthquake in japan hit in 2011 yeah. you see the tsunami effects and people like you got to run you know you know i can't speak jeff, my friend jeff can't but it's just <laughs> you, you watch all the clips and people are like oh my god you got to get you know get out of there yeah and then obviously everything happened with fukushima and that became the focus for a long time yeah rightfully so but yeah no it's it's mm. uh when it comes to stuff like that i i there was an i we were talking about this before before the podcast if you get a chance to see it, it's still on netflix it came out in 2015 it's called the wave it's a Norwegian film. Mm. So this geologist studying the concept of rock slides, and it's happened before in 1905. It's a you know, document evidence. And he says, if it slides and hits, it would create this massive tsunami to wipe out our town. We have to have preparations. You have to have response time. No one listens to him and all that stuff. But it's so well done. It's called The and, Wave? Yeah, The Wave. It came mm. out in 2015. It's still on Netflix. And I, I, I watch with subtitles, but it's it was it was they did a great job in it. Yeah, and it shows it could happen again. And we were talking about this, like I said, you know, there, there's uh, the Canary Islands, and there's a, a, a set of islands off the coast of you know, Western Europe and then Western Africa. If any one of them goes, you get a you get a an earthquake or another eruption. And if it would, if the western end were to ever slide off, that you know, the it would create a hundred foot tsunami that would mm-hmm. hit the entire eastern seaboard. Yeah, like what what would be our response time? Like what what do you even do to that? Like at least Hawaii goes, oh, they hear the siren, they run. Is there a tsunami siren in New York? Like, what, what, they'd be like, right? They'd be like, yeah, no one would know what the heck that is. But they'd be yeah. like, is, is, Spring, well, is, think, is Springsteen I don't playing? Think, I don't think that that's in an. I, I may be wrong, but I don't know that's in an area that is likely to have a tsunami. Right. I may be wrong. No, but it's I not. do that's know that they showed the rim of all the countries. I mean, you literally yeah. look at Pangea, not Pangea, but what all the the different continents, and how it they can tell. F- certain areas would be more susceptible. I yeah. don't know if that's a part of that, but... Well, you know what's interesting? When I was looking up facts uh, after watching The Perfect Storm, uh, scientists are trying to figure out if the wall of water that appeared in The Perfect Storm was a writer's imagination or if it was based on fact. And there's no data that says that that particular ship encountered a wall of water, but they have these devices scattered throughout the ocean that measures the rise and fall and they said they do have recorded data of like a hundred foot wall of water. I want to say like off New Jersey, like like it was pretty far north. And really? they have data of a hundred foot wall of water. Now, obviously, it never reached New right. Jersey, but it is possible. Is it we, likely? Probably not, but it is possible. I think we have recorded data even for the Great Lakes. You get rogue waves in in, in the Great Lakes in Lake yeah. Michigan that in the right conditions, and they've had ship, you know, yeah. 
trade, you know, merchant ships where they said, oh, my God, and a rogue yeah. wave hits them. The legend lives on. Edmund Fitzgerald. There you go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, and uh, so if you guys, if you get a chance to see it, the wave on Netflix, very well done. And it's a Norwegian yeah. film? Yeah. I love it. I love foreign flicks. Yeah, I know. That's what, there's a part of me that I almost say, you know, they didn't go for the big budget. They, they, they have the special effects, so it's not like someone just drops a little pebble in the water and like, look, and then film it on, on the low end. Like, there it is. <laughs> they try to get all old, old school Peter Jackson. It's like, yeah, there it is. Like, no, that's just a ripple. That's not a wave. <laughs> no, but they, they, it's, like I said, I, when I see international films that do that, I, I'll go, I'll, I, I'm more open to seeing it. And the wave was very well done. I enjoyed it. But if you're going to go full Roland Emmerich, look what the Chinese did. Wandering Earth, the sun is going to die. They move the planet. They put an engine on Earth and they're driving it away. Never heard of this. Yeah, it, it was like the fifth highest, <laughs> sorry, grossing movie ever. What? And they're yeah. making a sequel for it, and it's <laughs> it, <coughs> sorry, it's just making me choke on this. But <laughs> if you want just popcorn action, yeah, just sit down. Uh, Mark, in fact, uh, told me about this. And he goes, you got to see. It's called the Wandering Earth, and they basically are moving Earth to a different area and the problem is when they're driving it when the engines goes out it's going to smack into jupiter <laughs> so i'm like are you sure you want me to watch this he's like just trust me it's it's one of those things it's not even like william hung from like american idol where he's so bad that you you it's just so bad you can't it's like, I, it's like i've you, had you, no former training yeah. that's the surprise of the century yeah exactly <laughs> right it sounds like the kind of movie that would give neil degrasse tyson Oh, no. An aneurysm. No, I, I, I guarantee you, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Or he might just break into tears and start <laughs> laughing, you know? He just basically would see wand, Wandering Earth and go, fine. <laughs> like, no, I, we're you so, do not know Neil deGrasse Tyson. Like, uh, that is not how he would react. I mean, but it's like, it's like when you when you blow his fuse, <laughs> like there's nothing else he can do. It's like, this is so absurd, I can't even respond to it. I mean, look at the ending of the original Superman movie. Yeah. To go back in time... He flies yeah. around the Earth, thereby changing its rotation, which, according to the movie, reverses time. Yeah. He, that almost gave me an aneurysm, let alone Neil deGrasse Tyson. But come on, I don't know. Yeah, so, I mean, I would if you, have if a you, hard time getting past that premise. I mean, look when 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 <laughs> Mark told me like they're moving Earth because the Earth because the Sun is turning to a red giant's going supernova. They have to get Earth to safety, so they're they put an engine on the planet. If I understand you correctly, some other Transformers, like the cartoons, they're moving the planet. Yeah. And somehow they are veering into Jupiter. Yeah. <laughs> well, they've never driven a planet before. So what happens is, so what happens to the engine as the planet's turning? <laughs> does it go in circles? Or? I was like, is this like NASCAR? Can they only make left turns? Like, <laughs> like is this what's going to take a long time? Like, how are we doing this? Like, That's are, too are, funny. Are they planning for gravity? It's like, we can't affect the gravity. Around the way we go. Yeah. It's like, oh, oops, there's Venus. You know, so it's, uh, but I, I was watching it and I go, you know what? I, I'm entertained because I, because I, I, you shut off those parts of your brain, just like just entertain me. You want it, you want it, you know, you really do want it to work. And I think as a filmmaker, the point where you have the the audience, I think that people come into the movie, and they sit down and they're open minded. They're enthusiastic. They bought their buttered popcorn. They're sitting with their girlfriend. They made arrangements. They want the movie to work. They're Doesn't desperate. mean that they're not going to be a skeptic. Right. But they want the movie to work. And well, I think if everyone I were, goes in like Right, but yeah. if I'm if I'm a producer, director, uh, actor, I got to think to myself at what point did the audience turn against us? Yeah. At what point did we F things up so that they stopped caring about the characters? They stopped yeah. taking the threat seriously. They stopped being interested in the storyline. Yeah. That they, you know, and I think part of uh, an answer to that question, at least in part, is over explaining. Yeah. Like, like the day after tomorrow where I said they had terrible dialogue. You don't have to explain everything. If, if, Earth is encountering a, a new ice age. Do we really, as moviegoers, need to know all the details? 
Not necessarily. And if it were Dr. Emmett out. Brown and there was a whiteboard <laughs> and he kind of just diagrammed it, I'd be good with that. But you that know, even was a little much. You know what they could have done? They could have just made a polar vortex. It's a really bad, it's a polar vortex on steroids. Yeah, yeah. When that thing comes down, it's like, why are we getting negative 60 degrees yeah. in November yeah, in yeah. Michigan? Like, it's a polar vortex. The thing just, the jets, you know, like, whatever. The jet stream's just, like, dipping all the way down. Because I'm like, oh, okay. Done. Yeah. Do that. No, it has to be clear. <laughs> now, you know what's Come on, interesting? Rolling. You know, I was talking just a moment ago about how real life events kind of supersede film sometimes. I just saw something recently. There was a country in Asia, I can't remember which one it was, but they were experiencing really significant flooding, like unprecedented flooding. And I was kind of following the story in the news, and then I saw something where I was like, "What?" They said the the flooding and the torrential rain that they were experiencing was because of their their experiments with cloud seeding and and trying to affect weather and make the clouds rain because I guess previously they were experiencing a drought so they dabbled in cloud seeding and flooded whatever this Asian country was and there's you could google it and it comes up on Google oh. and it's a real thing it's not like some conspiracy theory or whatever there's a movie right there. It's cloud like, uh, seeding uh, gone wrong. Yeah, it's like what you said, the cloud scene. Let's take that down to space. Yeah. Let's see what happens. <laughs> and it's, you could almost imagine someone there like, Frank, when you did this, uh, did you write? Ah, I forgot to carry the one. <laughs> it's, I, I, I struggled with decimal points. Oh, so you're off by a factor of 10, huh? Okay. All yeah. right. So instead I of a sprinkle. I yeah. struggle with it. Yeah. That's you funny. sneeze. Yeah, that's you. Yeah, it's like, oh, oh, whoops. There we go. That's what it is. Yeah. I struggle with decimal points. All right, you got anything but, else on that list? I no, I'm good. It. You're good? All right. What are you bringing to the table, George? Not much at this point. You have to promise. We haven't gotten to the Sharknado in the room yet, so let me know when you're ready. I have to, not uh, seen Sharknado. <laughs> I, I'm not sure I want to put a whole And just be clear, lot. we're eliminating earthquake and volcano movies because those aren't weather. <laughs> I just wanted to emphasize that. You know. oh, we, we drew that line in the sand. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Just for our listeners, we'll probably revisit natural disasters at some point, which may include asteroids and meteors. And I mean, the algorithm kept steering but, me to I'm like weather-related movies. Yeah. You mean natural disasters? Like that yeah. is not what Armageddon. I mean. No, 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 yeah. no, no, not Armageddon. So yeah, so today we're focusing on specifically weather related. We'll revisit natural disasters down the road. But all right, so ahead. here's one that it popped up in my head, and I thought, you know what? I bet Joe's gonna love this. I bet you both will love this. Is this? Is this? Okay, you were talking about how there was just one wave, and that screwed something up, and that was the rest of the movie. It's just that one incident. Yeah, Poseidon Adventure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm gonna throw this in the middle of the room. Deliverance. No, oh. <sighs> because they didn't. They say that they were blocking off. Now this is man-made, but they're blocking off the canyon, and so that deliverance. I thought it was just a couple of guys going on a camping and hunting but trip, and uh, things yeah, go but horribly okay, so wrong. Maybe, maybe yeah. that's not okay. So that just popped up <laughs> in my head. It does go horribly wrong, but it's before they they build the dam, and so it's the that, last time it's yeah. going to be anyway. So uh, that maybe that's not it. Okay, all right. okay. The next one. That's definitely thinking outside the box. Yeah, okay. That was maybe way too far stretched. Next one. Here it is. Ready for this? Wizard of Oz. I'll, I'll uh, allow it. Because it's a real tornado at yeah. the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she bumps her head. Yeah. And that turns into the strange, strange story, but. Yeah. Now, it's weather plays a role, but can you describe Wizard of Oz as a weather-related Film, a little bit of a stretch, but I see where you're going with Maybe it. Maybe it's a spark. You guys didn't leave me much. Okay, I got to be honest. I'm, I'm looking at my my my, uh, my my list here. I didn't have a whole lot to work <laughs> oh, with. No, but... I, I hear George about that one because when we were looking through, we're like, oh, we can't do natural disasters. It has to be weather no, yeah. specific. I was well, like, I, have oh, a, crap. I have a couple of titles I haven't thrown out yet. I'll just do it quickly, see if you guys sure, agree. Shoot, shoot. 2013, little, little uh, movie that went under the radar called Frozen. Yeah. Is Frozen? Oh, okay. Is f- Frozen right. a weather All movie? Right. Is it, uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Anna and Elsa manipulating the weather. You want to build a snowman? Yes, I think we I, need to put it in the conversation. I, I, I appreciate what you're trying to do. And yes, it is woman made in this particular case. But, I mean, weather killed her parents. With okay. the shipwreck, if you're going that route, and that's what. Ooh, interesting. But okay. but and that's where I thought you were going with this because this one is like it's magic. She's doing <laughs> it on purpose. It's like, 
She, she manipulates the world. And she's not, is she really, is she causing an ice age? She just wants to be left alone. She wouldn't have built her like a bomb ass castle. <laughs> Where I'm like, yo, I mean, look, she just, she just upped the real estate value in that area. She built the square footage that she built there. Like there, there was no castle there. Now there's a castle overlooking the property. My, my yeah. property value just skyrocketed. Not all these weather-related movies have to be negative. What and I'll positive? never have a drought. She'll just make it. She'll make there it snow. <laughs> It'll melt. I'll, my crop. I mean, I, I see no downside to, to now, what Elsa did. Along the same lines, talking another animated movie here, two thousand two, the movie Ice Age. Oh yeah. Great cast: yeah. Dennis Leary, John Leguizamo, Ray Romano. Uh, I had to look up who produced it. It was Fox Animation in conjunction with Blue Sky Studios. Um, but That's here are these uh, Ice Age animals trying to deliver this human baby to its father or whatever. But Shit, the sloth is that... by John <laughs> oh, yeah, the, yeah. Oh, that great. and then the little, so little red squirrel thing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Scrat. Yeah. Now, and then here's a here's a documentary that came up on a couple of lists, The Inconvenient Truth. That's the other one I was going to say. Monster, monster hit yes. for it. I mean, it might be the most profitable documentary ever made. It was massive. 2006, Al Gore's baby, Was it 2006? I thought it was 2000, earlier it, than that. According okay. to my research, We are going to get assaulted so. by the Fox News bots now. <laughs> we are. Like you just right. said the, the word, in, like these, these keywords, like what? Who said that? Yeah, right. <laughs> Shut it down. The listening down. devices. Um, but you have to acknowledge the impact that that documentary had. Um, and then, okay, let's bring it up. Sharknado, 2013. Now, these weren't theatrical releases. These were sci-fi movies starring uh, and that, Ian, Ian Ziering. I had to learn how to pronounce his first name. Tara that, Reed, that John Hurd. tells you there yeah. is a line in Hollywood, Joe. There's a line <laughs> even in those, pitch, in those pitch meetings. You have to admit, though, that Hollywood probably stood up and took notice. They, they're like, hey, this Sharknado thing's a phenomenon. It spawned five sequels. Right. And Hollywood what? was like, we we missed the boat on this. You know, it's... Uh, so maybe we've seen similar things since then. But Isn't the main guy from 90210, what's his name? Ian. Ian. Yeah, yeah. That's Ian. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I think I may have mentioned this before on the podcast, but uh, one time when I was in the L.A. airport with some friends, we were grabbing lunch before our flight, and Ian Ziering came walking in. And uh, my buddy luckily told me how to pronounce his name. So I was like, hey, Ian, how's it going? And he, he looked kind of startled like we were going to tear into him because Sharknado was huge at the time, you know. And we were very pleasant and cordial. Just wanted to say hi to him. And he seemed relieved that we weren't going to mock him. Um, but I I tried to watch His default setting movies. is defensive. Yeah, His yeah. Default setting you have to defensive. imagine. Yeah, like, oh, crap. Not another person who's known seen Sharknado. For Sharknado you gotta, you're going to be heckled Ridicule. down the street. Yeah. Pulls out a spork hey, to defend himself. Look out for the shark, Ian. Um now, I, I think I tried watching the first one. I had to turn it off. I haven't seen any of the sequels. But to me, when you, when you think worst movies ever made in the history of Hollywood, for me, Sharknado is that joke. Like, was it ever intended? I mean, it's almost like a Leslie Nielsen movie. You expect him to pop yeah, up. And, yeah, nah, you know, surely you can't be serious. But, <laughs> it's yeah. not calling me Shirley. So, I mean, that's like, that's like giant octopus versus shark squid. Well, you know, that, on, on, that on was sci-fi. spawned from Sharknado. Once Sharknado got popular, they started doing, you but know, that's, that's tr- squidster. That, like, Sharknado is a truly <laughs> American thing. Yeah, yeah. I, like, you could not get away with this in probably most other civilized nations because... <laughs> Uh, it's 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 like watching it's like gawking at at a, at a traffic accident. Yeah, yeah, you can't help. It's like making William Hung, his CDs sold for a while. Like his oh, his yeah. CDs were trending because it's so bad. I have to listen yeah. to it. Yeah, and that's something that I. I it's a sickness. I'm ne- as much as I love movies, I gotta say I'm not a fan of bad movies. You have people out there who say, "Oh, it's so bad, it's entertaining." No, no, it's so bad, it's bad. The only exception I, I can even bring up is The Room. I remember the first time I saw The Room, it was so bad, it was hypnotic. Like, characters <laughs> changing for no reason. One guy had a beard, and then the next scene he doesn't have a beard. It was so bad that there was some entertainment value in there. But for movies like Sharknado and stuff like that, that deliberately try to be 
bad B movies. I I can't stomach that. I, it's just not how I'm wired. I want to see good quality and films. Five, five, five sequels. Sequels yeah, later. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody out there wants it. Yeah, I think these are the people that that purposely go and find the McDonald's knockoffs, <laughs> and just how how terrible what you know what's the worst most terrible food I can eat? You know, yeah. it's little Debbie's. Uh, well, it's, the Venn diagram is for Sharknado is Steven Seagal movies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the Venn diagram. The same people that <laughs> like all his movies since yeah, Under Siege. Yeah, I'll, I'll give him that. Yeah, yeah. Like so, we're talking about 1991, 92. Now this is this is a phenomenon that goes if that back. If that had failed, he would have gone nowhere. Oh, yeah. oh right, right. I, I really do think he would have gone nowhere. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Now I was going to say this is a phenomenon that goes back to when I was a kid. So you know, I remember sitting in a the theater watching Jaws, having that amazing theatrical experience watching Jaws. Then it was so huge that they do a Jaws two, a Jaws three, but then there was a movie called Orca with Bo Derek in it and Richard Harris. Yes, and you're like, Nyeh. and then there was Tentacles about the octopus. And then there was Piranha, which was deliberately campy. That was, I want to say Joe Don. No, who did Piranha? What, did Cameron, was, was Cameron the, involved in Piranha or Piranha 2? For, for one of them. Well, yeah, because they, yeah. made, they made a sequel or a re- reboot in the 2010s. Yeah, yeah. But that was a phenomenon that goes way back where you get, you kind of get this hit movie that catches everybody by surprise and then everybody tries to capitalize on it various levels of success i think the same thing happened with sharknado it caught people by by uh, surprise and and everyone said hey did you see sharknado it had this word of mouth maybe social media had a lot to do with it now all of a sudden but you're too. seeing all these not you know, the spin-offs and the, the tributes and people just trying to capitalize on oh if we make a deliberately bad movie it'll be as successful as sharknado and it's not let me, let so. me ask you a question and this this is maybe for another time, but if if there's a search for how fast can we get to the bottom, and then there's search for <laughs> if there's people that are saying let's how gory and disgusting can we be, and how how can we push? I mean, I don't like. I always tell my kids, I don't think there's going to be a Forrest Gump this summer. There's, no, and no. Forrest Gump was. I don't think there's going to be a Back to the Future this summer. No, I don't think that there's going to be. You know. Some really great. Everybody in the family goes and sees it. Everybody's enjoy it. it. Doesn't it? Doesn't mock anybody or make anybody feel. It just is awesome. Just really good. Yeah. And I, I just, I thought to myself, you know, if I had ten billion dollars because I hit the Powerball or whatever, <laughs> I would, I would hire a team to just say, I want you to create ten blockbuster movies that come out one every year yeah. for the next ten years. All I want is one really good movie. Just spend your time and really come up with yeah. a, a, a good premise and a good script. And it's got to be, it's got to be gutsy. It's got to be interesting. It's got to be, you know, it's got to have some raunch, a tiny bit of raunch, <laughs> but it's enough to get everybody in there. You just described the 90s, and I'm sure you yeah. can agree with yeah. me what on this. What do you this. mean by that? That's interesting. The 90s, Yeah. every, see, people are saying like with 2024, one of the problems with the film industry is there's no summer blockbuster. Right. Uh, maybe Deadpool, I don't know. But when you go back to the 90s, Will Smith, for five, six years in a row, they would release his summer blockbuster, you know, Memorial Day weekend or whatever. And then to try to get a jump on Will Smith, like the Fast and Furious movie started like coming out in May and April to right. get a jump. And oh. so, like, even though that was the 2000s, but in the 90s with Will Smith, you know, Independence Day, Men in Black, there was always these tent pole Bad boys. M- m- yeah. monster blockbusters. Every year, people look forward to the AC sitting in the theater, watching yes. these entertaining yes. blockbusters in the theater. Jurassic and, Park, Twister. Yeah. And then the surprises like the Forrest Matrix. Gump and Pulp Fiction and yeah. stuff like Armageddon, that that were more TV. artsy films. But... Hollywood, when people say Hollywood's in danger right now, it's not entirely COVID's fault. Nobody's making those kind of movies anymore. Every and, and, movie and I've think, seen in the last five years, I'm like, eh. I 100% agree. Am I just getting old? But I, I'll sit with my kids, and they'll say, oh, we liked it. And I'll get in the car, and I'll say, you don't want to know. And they'll say, oh, come on. You didn't like the movie? And I'll say, I'm not going to ruin it for you. If you guys enjoyed it, that's fine. Yeah. And when they were younger... 
they would say, well, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to hear you say this. I don't want you to, 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 to debase it. Cause I, I like the movie. And then they'll kind of say, well, I, I like this. And I'd say, well, that was kind of cool. And they'd say, well, what's wrong with it? Go, All right, here it comes. <laughs> and it's coming high. You know, this is a high and fast one. Here it comes. He didn't do this. And then she didn't. So she didn't have the reason. And I felt, and they'd sit there and go, yeah, I, I questioned that too. Yeah. And then you'd say, and why didn't at the end, why didn't we ever find out about that one guy who was standing by the road? We, <laughs> we never saw. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> and like, it didn't make sense. They hated that. And so now they're all film critics themselves. Which is great. And, and they awesome. hate me for it because they can't <laughs> enjoy a movie. Yeah. And they don't want to see it with me because it. I'll sit and actually just like destroy the movie. Like I'll say, why would he say something as stupid as that? That's outside of his character. That doesn't make yeah. any sense. Look what and you've that's... done, father. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's interesting because for me, as I love movies, I've loved movies my whole life. But the aspect of being a film lover are the conversations. That's what I love, and that's yes, why this that's why podcast exists. Yes. I love dissecting movies and breaking them down and trying to find flaws and. The fewer flaws a movie has, the higher up it is on my list of hundred greatest movies. But, yeah. it, that's interesting. So it's 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 the absence of flaws, kind of like I, I can I can suspend you know my disbelief. Yeah, no, I, I understand that, but but that's topics, an interesting but, way of looking at it yeah. because really, truly, there's so many good movies out there, or the potentially good movies out there. But what what kills us is those flaws that that don't they're non sequitur or that don't mm-hmm. that don't come together that don't tie things up nicely or mm-hmm. or lead into something i don't care to a degree if if the if the if the hero dies at the end but i do care yeah. if you were trying to make me feel bad for him but you didn't do the the character it's development it's the execution mm-hmm. it's the execution. i just yeah. you know it's like i can't stand it anyway sorry M- no that's what a great point. Yeah, it's also one of the things why you know i probably shouldn't have kids because that'd be one of the things in a similar situation if i'm in the car and they're like so what do you think well i'm disappointed uh, on two levels. Why? I'm disappointed in the movie, and I'm disappointed because I raised you to have taste. <laughs> and I failed. I yeah. So failed. sometimes I'll tell the kids, I'll say, they'll say, Dad, did you like it? And they'll say, well, I liked it in some ways. Or I'll say it like this. <laughs> I liked it in some ways. <laughs> <laughs> I'm say, stop it. We have just a couple minutes left, oh, but I, I get angry on social media, and I think people just do this to generate responses. We call them trolls. But I hate when I see someone on social media go, uh, the uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was actually a great movie. <laughs> and I just want to respond by saying, no, it was no. not. No, don't you just the saying paint. that for responses. So I don't engage those people. I block those people because I know what they're trying to I, do. I was at your response, Joe, don't keep your <laughs> eyes shut. Like in Larissa, <laughs> don't look. Just keep your eyes shut. Uh, no. <sighs> when, when you had Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, which is one of my top five favorite of all time. I absolutely love the beginning. Mm-hmm. Just, I mean, I fell out of my chair. You could not get, that was the cocaine <laughs> I got as an early child that I was 12 when that came That's out. That's a good description of that movie. It was like a <laughs> cocaine-fueled Oh, rage. it was phenomenal. <laughs> and, the, and the pacing was good. And then you saw, uh, what was the next one that came out? The Temple of... Well, last, last Raiders of the Lost, Raiders of the Lost Ark was the first. Then first, Doom. then there was Temple of Doom, then Temple Last of Doom Crusade was with Sean Connery. Yeah, I'm sorry, Temple of Doom was absolutely terrible. Oh, so what, you, did I you meant, say Temple of Doom? I meant to say the first Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. So that, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, yeah. my bad. My right, Raiders yeah. of the Lost Ark, Temple Ark, of Doom me, does not, it doesn't even, it's not even no, on my 100 greatest movie list. Oh, it's not on my no. 500. In fact, yeah, it's yeah. my negative list because I'm so yeah. mad that they just vomited something out, which was so poorly done. Now, Last Crusade salvaged it it brought it back bit. to its origins a little bit but, yeah yeah all right well we're just yeah, about sorry. out of time uh that was a great conversation and uh i, I one last thing I, i'd pay to be be a student or to be in a to watch you two like be professors in in film school and have them say <laughs> Uh, and so what do you think about birds? You know, birds reminded me a lot of Sharknado. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the animals. And just to see the, your reactions, you both just watching your audience. And I'd say, uh-huh. Professor, Professor Joe, what do you have to say? Professor George, what do you have to say? I would get angry. <laughs> I, I it reminded me of birds. I, you know, I'm so passionate about movies that it, it comments like that would, like, spark outrage. For me, oh, so. man. Get out! <laughs> And Come tell by the music. The yes, that was fantastic. We're just about out of time. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks Night for listening. Everybody. We'll Put see. Some sunshine into your day. Focus.
Forget the hard times. Come to the movies and try to laugh your troubles away.